This is what we will be line arting today. Don't worry, you will see the whole process. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to go over some very important basic principles of line art to keep in mind before we do the actual process of line, line arting a full piece. So the first thing to keep in mind for line art is when you do any sort of drawing, but especially line art, it's very important to use dragging motions and use gravity to your advantage. You do not want to be pushing up the canvas. Uh, it generally, you just have a little bit less control pushing up, like, you know, you want to have a little bit more free flowing uh, feeling with gravity coming down. Pulling is the motion that you want when it comes to doing your lines. So remember, pulling, not pushing. And then the next thing to keep in mind is we're going to talk about line weight. So I'm just going to do a really quick little demo with a circle. Typically, you want your outside edges, the outside lines, to be thicker than the details on the inside. So if this is the line weight we're working with, then I want the inside details to be much thinner line. Nice, thick outlines. Oh, that doesn't really match. And then the inner details are uh, thinner lines. That's another thing to keep in mind. Thick outlines, thin inlines when it comes to your uh, line weight. Another thing to keep in mind, there are some overlapping objects. So let's say that this front circle, this top circle is actually overlapping this back circle. <laughs> Looks a little bit like uh, <laughs> something. But anyway, you would want these lines that are in front to be thicker than the lines behind. And if they are meeting, then you also might want to make the line weight of these lines where they're meeting a little bit thicker as well. Okay, so it, even if there are like thin details, then you may, <laughs> this is looking more and more, uh, I don't know, <laughs> questionable, whatever this example is, but anyway, adding a little bit of thickness where things are intersecting. Look, it's just abstract shapes, guys. It's just abstract shapes. Something else to keep in mind is kind of, it's a little bit of a feeling thing, but when you have a curving line, if you think about a river, the sediment piles up when the river bends. And you may want to think about your line art the same way when there's like a really forceful curve. How is it if it starts out thinner on the ends, is thicker and then thinner? Okay, it feels like there's more force happening, a little bit more energy in that line. You can also try the opposite if you want it to feel more stretched, starting thick, going thin, and then thick again so that the, the curve actually feels more stretched. And both of these are interesting. They just feel differently. And, but both of them can help with your flow in your line art if you are thinking about the, how, how the line changes as it goes around a curve. I will show you my brushes that I use. My favorite brush for line art and Procreate is actually a default brush. You come to the brushes and you go to the calligraphy section and then you find the chalk brush. So my style of line art that I prefer tends to have a, a lot more texture to it. And that's why I really like the chalk brush. Um, I actually just do all of the default settings. I don't really mess with any of this. I just kind of prefer the default chalk brush. But if you find that you would like to, you know, mess with these settings, I recommend duplicating the brush uh, just so that you have a backup for the default settings. If we take a look at this brush, 
you can see that it has some of this nice uh, grainy texture to it, which is what I prefer. And then the other thing that's nice about this brush is that since it's a calligraphy brush, it has um, a fair amount of that smoothing to it. So you can see how it kind of drags a little bit behind. And that makes this brush pretty nice for line art, at least I think so. If that amount of smoothing um, bothers you, you can of course come into the brush and adjust this setting right here. This is the streamline setting and that will adjust how kind of smooth that flow is. So I'm going to try and set it back up to what it was originally. But again, if you want to adjust this down, you can, if you want to adjust it up, I don't know that I would recommend adjusting it up higher than 41%, but you can give it a try. I think that it might feel a little bit too weird if you go up too high, but let's just go back to the default. Um, something that helps a lot in Procreate with line art is the smart shapes feature. So if you want a circle, you can just hold it and it will make a circle. Same if you want like an angle. All right, so this can be uh, very helpful for you is this, these smoothing shapes. This is the character or the drawing that I am going to work on line arting today. Um, as you can see, as with most of my sketches, it's, uh, it's pretty rough, it's pretty loose. There's a lot of things that we could interpret here when it comes to actually line arting. And the trick is going to be uh, deciding where will be the best placement for the lines. I'm gonna take down the opacity of the sketch. So we have a new layer for the line art. I'm going to be using this chalk brush. When I usually start out, I keep my line art somewhat thin. Uh, I kind of like thin, thin line art. Um, and then we will add some more thickness in certain areas a little bit later. I tend to be a little bit more zoomed out. So when it comes to line art, obviously, you don't want a bunch of lines right next to each other. You don't want hairy lines. You want one solid stroke. And I find that it's much easier to get that clean stroke in one go when I'm a little more zoomed out. So the first thing that I focus on is usually the face and getting in some pretty thin lines to start out as a base for the face line art. I feel like it's just easier to first start in on areas that I feel are most important or should have the most focus. So that's just where I naturally am drawn to start. But then I kind of will begin branching out and just kind of line arting areas that um, I find interesting. There's not really a huge um, rhyme or reason to which areas I line art first, other than I almost always start with at least part of the face to begin with. So I highly recommend when you are working on line art, I mean when you are drawing at all, but especially when you are working on line art, because line art is a little bit more delicate, I highly recommend making sure you find kind of a comfortable ergonomic position to draw in. I typically when I'm drawing on my iPad and I'm doing line art on my iPad, I can kind of move the iPad around and adjust it to however I need if I'm like sitting on my couch. But what I have learned from just making this tutorial and having to keep the iPad in line with the camera is it actually made the whole drawing process and experience, especially with line art, uh, just extra difficult. So if you can, I definitely recommend trying to find as comfortable of a position as possible. In the line art process, it is extremely important to try and make your line art feel confident with each stroke, which can be challenging. And that's why you see there are a lot of undos and redraws with each stroke in my line art process. I mean, not each stroke, but a lot of strokes, especially the longer continuous strokes. If I don't quite get uh, the shape that I want on that first stroke, I just undo and I try again because I don't really like breaking up my lines when it's supposed to be a continuous line. I don't like 
drawing it in a couple different segments, I would much prefer to zoom out and get one sweeping stroke to create that line instead of multiple lines that can look really broken up. I want that flow to be all in one motion. So that's why you are definitely going to see a lot of undos in this part in this process. But um, that is part of my process. Obviously, if you are working traditionally, you cannot undo. Um, so uh, when you are working traditionally with line art, and maybe this is a good exercise, even if you're working digitally, but it's not an exercise that I'm using in this piece. But if you are working traditionally, even if you mess up a one stroke, you have to try and figure out how to make it work with your design and just own up to whatever mistakes you make in ink. And that really helps build your line confidence. There's a little bit of line variation I have going on here simply because of the brush that I'm using. It automatically gives a little bit of that texture, a little bit of that variation but I'm not really focusing on that at the moment. At the moment, I'm really just trying to get the line art in for all of the elements, and then I will start to build up more and more of that line weight. And so maybe I will speed this part up a little bit so that we can get to the next step and enjoy the process. So because I have the tendency to do very loose and rough sketches, meaning that I do not define every single little detail in my sketch, uh, the line art process for me does tend to be a, still a bit of a discovery phase in my artwork. It still is a phase where I'm doing a lot of problem solving because sometimes in the sketch I actually haven't figured out what what every little detail is going to be. For example, in her headpiece with that little flower, I didn't really have any idea laid down in the sketch other than a really rough, rough shape. Uh, ended up going with a flower and just drawing that in. Um, if this is something you struggle with, doing just a quick, like a little clean drawing and trying to turn that directly into line art, I recommend trying to still figure out the details in your actual sketch before doing your line art. But if doing that kind of discovery and direct drawing with your line art without the, the details mocked up in the sketch underneath, if that is something that doesn't scare you too much to at least try out, I think it is a really fun part of my process. Uh, I enjoy it because you know, I, I don't have a very long attention span, so just sitting and doing line art on a sketch that has every detail already mocked up, uh, it might get a little bit boring for me, personally. I much prefer to still have that kind of excitement of discovery while I'm doing my line art. And also, because my line art does tend to be a little bit on the rougher side, uh, to me, it is actually okay if there are parts of my line art that look a little bit more like a sketch. It's still clean line art, but I do really like it to have a little bit of that roughness.
All right, so now that I have most everything in, I'm starting to build up a bit more of line weight. And a very important rule of thumb that you almost can't go wrong with is the outside lines of your drawing are going to be thicker than the inside lines of your drawing. So I am extremely inspired by artists like Mooka and, you know, Art Nouveau art. It's just a really, really good line art reference. And if you take a look at those uh, artworks, you will see that the outer lines are always quite a bit thicker than the lines on the inside of the figure of all of the details. And of course, you can see this in other artworks as well. It's just very, very obvious in Art Nouveau paintings or drawings. So they're really, really good reference to look at. But at the same time, I'm also very inspired by the pencil concept art drawings of like Final Fantasy. And so my goal is to try and kind of marry those two uh, approaches is having kind of that thin pencil line for a lot of my line art while also adhering to or getting that Art Nouveau look when it comes to the beautiful details and line weight. And clearly I've gone a little bit out of order here. Usually I actually start with the eyes, but for this one I kind of left the eyes for a little while. And to kind of simplify the eyes, often I will just totally fill in the iris with black and then later I will go back and erase with an eraser. Um, I'm not exactly sure why I do this. I think it just simplifies it all for me. It helps me get something looking decent before uh, really committing. And it gives me an overall impression of the piece when I kind of just block in uh, things like the iris. Because it's really easy in digital art anyway to go back and simply use the eraser. Starting to really just skip around in the piece, trying to figure out some of the details, especially when it comes to the hair and the head pieces. I wasn't totally sure what I wanted there um, until I started doing the line art. And so you will see that I, I kind of skip back and forth between adding line weight to the outside like I'm doing here with the leaves in the headpiece. I'm making sure that those leaves that are on the outside of the head have thicker lines than the leaf details that are actually on the inside of her silhouette. And like I said, there's not really much of an order for me when it comes to what I prefer to work on. It's just generally, first I get thin lines in for most of the bigger shapes and bigger details, and then whatever draws my attention and my interest, I start adding more details to and more line weight to. And you can see with this flower is a really good example of adding line weight to where objects kind of intersect and overlap, making the lines a little bit thicker in those corners, like where the petals are overlapping with the leaves and the petals are overlapping with each other. It can really just help add that dimensionality to your artwork when you add that little bit of line weight where you have these overlapping objects. Now I'm going in and using the eraser tool to erase away the inside of that iris that I had blocked in initially and adding in a little uh, indication of the pupil as well. And I do tend to come back to the eyes multiple times throughout a piece just to make sure they are looking good. Uh, eyes in character pieces tend to be very, very important. They tend to be very expressive. So it's okay to revisit the eyes and make sure they're looking, um, th they're really popping nice and they're looking correct. And I definitely felt that with this piece coming back to the eyes multiple times. For this piece, I had not had the hair completely figured out, especially when it comes to the top of the head. So in the line art, I actually had to change the shapes that were happening 
and I decided to go with more of a little cowlick in the front where her hair parts. And so when it comes to making these kind of cowlick shapes, the way I tend to do it is by adding some darkening lines and line weight underneath the hair where the shadow is going to be. Sometimes I leave a little bit of spaces, but I tend to leave it, you know, kind of sketchy underneath. Just a little bit of darkening. Almost I pretend like I am drawing with a pencil um, when I darken this, adding some, some of those just like rough lines underneath the hair to darken where it is parting. Continuing to add in those little details, this time for the clothes. I try not to get too caught up in making every single detail super perfect. Um, as long as it communicates what I want it to communicate, it's, uh, it, it tends to work out all right, especially since I will get to adding more line weight a little bit later but adding in just those indications that there's some little ruffles there. If I wanted to get really detailed with it and get it really accurate, I would look up probably some more reference for specifically how lace like that looks, but I thought this worked out pretty well. And now I wanna come in and really just totally fill in these really dark areas that would definitely be in dark shadow so where her shawl is and then adding more of these hair details and while I add these hair details also including a little bit more of that line weight specifically where the hair is overlapping and where maybe it is really close to the scalp where there would just be a lot more shadows or if the hair would be casting a shadow on the hair like in front of it. And now I have been avoiding the details and figuring out what's going on in the hair for far too long. So I need to sit down and really figure that out by trying a few shapes and then uh, figuring out what works, what looks good, while also adding line weight to the outside silhouette of that hair. And then adding thinner lines to the details of the hair that are on the inside of the silhouette. So thick lines outside, thin lines inside is the basic rule that you have going on. And then slightly thicker lines where the line where there are objects overlapping and maybe where the line is kind of pushing if you think about how uh, a river if you think about a river if a river goes around a curve often sediment and debris will pile up along the bank of that curve you can think about some of your lines in a similar way where if they are going around a curve maybe you add try adding a little bit of a thicker line as it makes that bend it's line art is one of those things where you really have to develop a feeling for it and I know that sounds a bit strange that there's I mean there is kind of a formula for it but at the same time to get really good at line art I mean it just it does take practice, of course, knowing the principles helps, but the more you practice, the more you will understand that, that kind of feeling and that push that, uh, that you're trying to achieve, the kind of force as you make a curve with that line or as it goes around a corner or whatever it is. And I know this is getting a little abstract, but if you can kind of just imagine what does it feel like as a, a river goes around a bend, the sediment piles up along that bend, and then <laughs> try and apply that to your line art. 
I'm so sorry for those of you that I just lost with that abstract analogy, but it, it it's how it's really stuck in my mind, that imagery, and it really has helped me with my own line art. And let me be real with you guys, I actually used to hate doing line art. I was not good at it. I, I mean, I'm a pretty messy drawer, so line art was always very, very painful for me because I felt like I would try and use this really crisp brush to do my line art. It would always come out kind of shaky or jittery. I would try and get every detail exactly perfect and it never came out perfect. And then everything just ended up looking very stiff. But it's only through kind of discovering the style and working with a little bit more of a textured brush and then just learning the feel of what is a line, like how does this line feel if I add a little bit more weight as it either makes that curve or maybe maybe instead of making it feel like heavy on the curve, what, what happens if I try making it thinner on the curve? Does that make it feel like stretched? Is that the feeling I want? And just learning what, what kind of line weight helps your eye flow through the piece while still communicating all of the details. And uh, yeah, sorry for that little tangent, but I, I kind of wanted to just give you an insight to my thought process and actual feeling of working on line art. It can be a little bit scary sometimes, but it is actually very, very helpful in some areas when you are working on line art to try filling in with black or at least somewhat with black in some of the really, really dark areas that are overlapping, like uh, underneath the hair where it will usually be very, very dark. Um, and it's not like I f totally fill in a solid black color when I do fill in those types of areas but what I do is I tend to kind of do a little bit of scribbling to fill in those areas so there is a little bit of the canvas underneath that shows through but it is mostly blocked in with um, my line art color whether it's black or red I do often do my line art sketches in like a dark brown or a red today I was a little bit unusual with using uh, a black color for my line art. Typically I don't do that, but uh, I felt like it worked okay for this piece to work in black. It also stands out best uh, for filming, so <laughs> worked out fine. And if I'm working digitally, you may notice that there are some areas that I actually tackle my line art a little bit how I will sometimes sketch, which is even though I've blocked in maybe a smooth line, if I want to add some more details like a slightly different shape or an indent or something, I will actually use the eraser tool to erase away and add a little bit um, of the more exact shape that I want. It's um, it's not something that you could do really traditionally, but since I'm working digitally and usually I'm working digitally, it's, uh, it's definitely something that I have gotten in the habit of doing. And now coming back to the eyes actually, because uh, like I said, <laughs> I tend to come back to the eyes multiple times throughout the process to try and make sure that they are really looking like I want them to look and commuting communicating what I want. So adding a little bit more details and line weight around the face, under the chin. Usually if you think about line weight and like gravity, you can also think about adding a little bit thicker lines on lines that are below. So maybe to try and visualize this, let's say like the top of the head 
yes, the lines on the outside of the head, on the top of the head are uh, thicker than like the detail lines, but they're not quite as thick as the lines that are maybe on the bottom of the head because you're trying to add kind of that weight and gravity to your line art. And of course you may have noticed that at this point I've actually turned off the under sketch because we definitely have enough line art here that you don't I mean, you don't need the under sketch anymore when you get to this point, unless you feel like you've lost something that the initial sketch had, which happens sometimes. But turning off the sketch gives you a really much more clear view of what you have going on with the line art. It also frees you up if you've been too tied to the details in your sketch and you want to have a little bit more freedom and openness to experiment a bit. And I definitely felt that with the hair, like I needed to turn that sketch off so that I wouldn't be so distracted by whatever I had roughly put in for the hair. Once you get to this point, I mean, this is looking pretty good. It's all just kind of what I will usually do is I will zoom out, look at how everything looks like as a whole, notice uh, an area that I want a little bit more line weight or adjustment to, zoom in, add that detail, add that adjustment, zoom out, look at the whole thing again. I think it is very, very important to make sure you often look at the zoomed out version of your artwork or you can miss something or, you know, it just gives you a good overall uh, view, a bird's eye view of your work, which is extremely important when it comes to catching mistakes or just making sure the whole thing flows together as a, as a whole. So she is basically complete. I'm just adding those final little touches. Sometimes something that I do for underneath the chin is I will add actually a full like kind of colored in chin shadow depending on the piece and how it's how it's looking. I think that this piece doesn't really need it but I wanted to give it a quick little try and see how it looks with that little bit of shading underneath the chin. I mean just like totally blocking it in and seeing how it looks and I, I don't think it looks bad actually. I think it looks pretty interesting. Uh, I think basically with this one, we could go either way. Uh, I do like it. <laughs> I don't know. I can't decide, to be honest, which version I like better. But uh, it is something to to uh, to consider doing. It's it's a style thing, definitely. You see it a lot in much more like stylized cartoon types of things. Depending on how you are planning to shade and color your line art, you may want to add something like that, or maybe you don't. If you're going to go in and do kind of a full painting rendering style, then maybe you don't. Um, if you are doing just like flat colors, it could be very helpful to add that just blocked in uh, chin shadow on the neck. This piece is basically done. So let me just do a quick little recap for you on the important things to remember when it comes to line art, at least the way I approach line art. Uh, one, you should, when you are drawing, especially when you are doing line art, always use a dragging kind of motion you want. It's a pulling motion with your, with your pencil. You don't usually want to push up the canvas when you are drawing. It just gives you a lot less control. It can make your lines a little bit more jittery. Pulling, let gravity work for you by, by pulling the pencil down, uh, to make your lines. Two. Outside lines are going to be thicker than the inside lines. So what I mean by that is lines that are creating the silhouette of your drawing are going to be thicker than the detail lines on the inside of your drawing. My process for this is I do my general lines without worrying too much about line thickness in the beginning. And then after I have most of my lines in at kind of a standard thickness, 
then I will go in over top and add more line weight to the outside lines and other areas that need more line weight. Speaking of other areas that need more line weight, remember that overlapping lines, overlapping objects, the object in front that is doing the overlapping, that line is usually going to be a thicker line. Ends of lines where areas meet or intersect or areas that might be in a lot of shadow are going to typically have a heavier line weight. Remember the river bend analogy where a, a curving line will often look like it has a little bit more push and force behind it, behind it if you add some more thickness where the line is curving if you want it to feel a little bit more stretched then you will actually do the opposite and make it thinner where the line is curving and then thicker on the ends of the line and again remember gravity in your line art so uh, lines that are lower on your artwork might be might look like they have more weight if you add a little bit more thickness kind of reinforcing that that gravity and weight to your object or your character or whatever you are drawing. And in areas that are going to be in really dark shadow, try seeing how it looks to just kind of fill in those areas with some thicker lines or kind of scribbled lines. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. I know that my process is a little bit all over the place. That's kind of the, the difficult thing about trying to explain my process is that it, uh, it really is all over the place. I don't have very specific formulas all the time, or at least I don't consciously think about formulas when it comes to doing things like my line art. So it's definitely an interesting experience trying to organize my process and my thoughts for a tutorial like this, but I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you some insights and some stuff to try. Um, my big, big advice for line art, uh, other than just kind of remembering the points I already talked about is practice, practice, practice. The thing about line art and anything with art, but especially line art is it really takes a feeling and the only way to truly develop that, that feeling of the line art flow and the weight is to practice and just uh, keep going, keep trying, keep doing it. And I understand line art can be really tricky and really painful. Like I said, I experienced that for a long, long time and even sometimes still, but it's only the la in the last couple of years that I've gotten really comfortable with line art. And it is thanks to practicing and also frankly, um, finding brushes that I like for it. And the brush for Procreate, again, a reminder, the brush that I'm using here is the chalk, the calligraphy chalk brush. In Clip Studio, I recommend um, some of the rougher inking and pencil brushes. The actual brush that I use in Clip Studio is a brush that I paid for and it's called Teague's Folly RNG. It's from the Friend and Brush Pack. Uh, I decided to go with an iPad tutorial because it seems like a lot of you have iPads and because I use a default brush for my line art on the iPad. So that's why we're in Procreate today. But anyway, tangent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys have a really great rest of your day. Happy drawing. Thank you so much for being a supporter and uh, I really appreciate you. There's no way I could do tutorials like this without your guys' support on Patreon. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It means a lot that you guys believe in me even when I don't believe in myself. Uh, okay, I'm just getting mushy. I'll let you guys go. Have a good rest of your day. Bye!